Welcome to another live interaction session from the Apollo Heart Center. The monsoons bring a relief from the scorching heat during the summers, but with their respite, they also bring along with them various maladies. Every monsoon season, the risk of catching various diseases is extremely high due to unhygienic conditions and not adhering to basic preventive measures. Many of these monsoon diseases remain undiagnosed until they progress to undesirable complications. This is why early diagnosis and treatment of diseases in rainy season is important, making the difference between life and death sometimes. In today's session, we have with us Dr. Sadhana Dhaupani, our consultant family physician at Apollo Heart Center. She has graduated from the Stanley Medical College and worked as a general practitioner in the United Kingdom after finishing her postgraduate training there. A doctor who firmly believes in prevention is better than cure. Dr. Sadhana Dhaupani provides consultation and treatment to patients with diabetes, hypertension, fever, and she's passionate about preventive healthcare. Welcome, Namaste. Ma'am, ma who, whom should you consult for monsoon infections? Uh, the monsoon infections are quite rampant um, after the rains. And uh, when you do have a fever, cold, cough, if it is a simple infection, you can treat it at home yourself. But if the infections are a little bit serious, you have to consult your local doctor, or we call it as general practitioners here. What not to do, in fact, when such an infection happens, ma'am? Um, the spectrum of the fever is so wide. So people do not know when to see a doctor and when not to see a doctor. So the fever along with cough, cold, if it is lasting for two to three days without much problems like uh, chest, like bringing out sputum or if they're feeling drowsy or if there's confusion or if there's any breathlessness, then they can treat it by themselves with fever and paracetamol. But if any of these symptoms, like your breathlessness, chest pain, you're feeling drowsy, you're feeling confused, and if, especially in little children, it is very difficult to identify when they're really sick and when they're really not. So in these sort of conditions, you need to approach your local doctor or approach the local hospital to consult the doctor to see what type of an infection it is. So what you shouldn't be doing is try not to postpone seeing a doctor. You have to, if any of these serious signs, which we call it as, if it is present, you need to consult your doctor immediately. Please do not postpone thinking it is just a simple fever and we can treat it by ourselves. So please, there are people who, you know, there are a lot of myths and beliefs in India where they tie something on their hand or they go to a temple and things like that to reduce the intensity of their fever. Please do not do that because those are the serious ones which come very late to the hospital and they're really, really sick beyond treatment. Why are antibiotics not prescribed for common cold? Antibiotics is mainly prescribed for um, bacterial infections. Common cold is usually produced by common viruses. These viruses linger for about three to four days and after that, they get better or they leave the body and the patient gets better after that. So antibiotics is not going to work for common cold and that is the reason it is not generally prescribed. As I said earlier, you just have to take a lot of fluids, take some paracetamol, rest completely, stay at home and the common cold or the flu also with simple symptoms, it should get better. Um, is it safe to eat salads in monsoon season? As long as the salads are washed properly and not stored for a longer period of time, salads can be eaten at any time of the year. But it has to be handled by proper um, people who are working in restaurants. It's not advisable for people who are having colds and coughs to uh, prepare the salads. And that's why we ask them to avoid eating salads at restaurants. But at home, yes, if you're going to cut fresh, and eat fresh, there's no problem in eating salads at all. Yes. Are there any vaccines to prevent monsoon infections and who should be taking them? Right. This is a very important question because um, the vaccines that we're going to talk about now is the mainly the infection that we get during the season 
is the influenza, which is common common name is called as flu. So this vaccine is available for all of us who are more than six months old and it is definitely recommended. There are a lot of uh, organizations like WHO and CDC which recommend vaccines for people who are more than 65 years old who have chronic health problems like your heart, kidney, renal problems, who are pregnant, who are immunosuppressed, who like people who have cancer and who are on steroids. They should definitely take the influenza vaccine and also the pneumonia vaccine as we call it as the vaccine that is available currently is available for the four types of viruses so that should be given to all of them to prevent flu or the influenza so and as a community if you look at it it is better for all of us to have it so that we don't get hospitalized number one don't take time off school or work and don't undergo through the um, ordeal of having an influenza. So the vaccine is very, very important for all of us. And especially for healthcare people who are working in healthcare, it is very important for us to have the vaccines done as well. So the, the currently the vaccine that is available is in flu quadri, which is, um, which is covering four types of viruses. And that is should be had um, once a year the reason that the vaccine has to be had once a year is every time the virus keeps changing itself and every year it might come up with a different uh, variety. So we have to take vaccine once a year. It is definitely recommended for all of the patients who have chronic health problems. Ma'am, what food or how do you suggest a diet for school going children uh, in the monsoon season? See, there isn't any specific type of food that you would advise during the monsoon season. But generally, to boost up your immunity for the children and for the adults, we advise you to take more of um, vitamins and minerals in the form of fruits and vegetables. And um, seasonal fruits which are available, people can have it, children can have it. And it's also at this time of the year, the children, children will be writing exams. So they need extra energy and they need a lot of immunity to fight against all these infections. So diet rich more in fruits and vegetables would be the ideal diet for the children. Uh, um, mosquitoes are a common menace during this season. Uh, what precautions should we take to prevent our kids from uh, getting bitten? See, this um, concept is like you have to, the government ha has been implementing a lot of um, precautionary measures to prevent mosquitoes from breeding. Um, as we, we must have seen, all of us must have seen in the television, you know, when you go to the movie theaters, they put it uh, as a pre log sort of thing. You have to avoid stagnant water in, either around your house or around your apartments. And um, inside the house, you have to, uh, have a mosquito net over your children's bed or uh, apply the insect repellents and wear long sleeved shirts and trousers a bit loose because they're going to sleep at night time. Um, these are the precautionary measures that you would do. The best thing is to avoid the stagnant water, um, is, especially in the places where you're going to, especially in schools and in the places that you work and in, in the house as well. There are a lot of hidden places in the house where you will not notice that the water is being stagnant. So you need to really have a good check of the house to make sure that the water is not stagnant and avoid the breeding of the mosquitoes. And what are the diseases caused predominantly in the monsoon? As, the monsoon? as I said earlier, the influenza is the most predominant disease, um, which we call it as flu. And um, unfortunately, this influenza results in millions of deaths worldwide. Um, it either causes a death as it's on its own, or the other thing is it causes pneumonia with a chest infection, which we call it as, and that, especially in elderly, leads to many number of deaths. The other uh, diseases that we can talk about is your dengue, which is very common after the rainy season. So as long as the rain is there, the mosquitoes will be fine. And after the rain, rains are over, when there's stagnant water, they start to multiply a lot. And that's the time the patients get dengue fever. So that is one of the most commonest uh, in infections. And malaria is another one, especially at this time of the year that we need to talk about. 
and pneumonia is, as I said, the chest infection is another disease. And in certain patients, the asthma also gets worsened during because of the cold climate. A lot of people will be exposed to more cold weather and they do get acute asthma. And the exacerbation of the bronchitis or the chronic bronchitis, we call it as, that also um, is very prevalent during the season. Now, how can I ensure hygiene for my family members? Hygiene um, it should be um, there throughout the year, but in particular, if you look at it, if you look at the monsoon season, um, it, the influenza, which we call, which we were talking about, is mainly spread by droplet infection. Um, so, if somebody is coughing or sneezing, um, the person who's got the influenza is coughing or sneezing. The droplet gets passed from one per that person to you and it gets deposited in your nose and then that's how you get influenza. The, the other ways that you do get is you need to keep your door knobs, your computer keyboards, your phones, all these sort of small gadgets. You have to keep cleaning them and keep your floors clean and make sure everybody is clean in the house and when they cough or sneeze. Um, they make sure they cover themselves and cough or sneeze because the way of transmission is through droplets. Um, why are waterborne diseases more active during rainy season? The reason is, as I said earlier, the, um, the mosquitoes breed in stagnant water. The dengue mosquitoes, especially if you look at them, they, are more, um, they breed more in the fresh water. So the brain is obviously at the fresh water and if you, there is stagnant water anywhere in the house, you know, where the government has been showing repeated uh, videos of where the water gets collected in and around the house. So these are the places where the mosquitoes breed quite a lot. And that's why the monsoon diseases or the diseases like dengue is very common. And also during the cold season, you keep your windows and doors closed and the way that the influenza spreads is through the coughing from one person to the other. So the space is very confined and that's how the patients get infected. Well, why is malaria common during the rainy season? It's actually the same question as it answered before. It is the breeding of the mosquitoes is very, very common during the rainy season. And the mosquitoes breed a lot during this period of the time. Um, through the in the water and um, the main aim is to prevent the log stagnation of the water and uh, from the government point of view they have been doing the fogging and all these things and from our part, point of view we have to make sure that we have the mosquito net supply the insect repellents and everything to keep ourselves safe. So during the rainy season the mosquitoes breed a lot and we see a lot of them in our homes and around our homes. Yes. And we use a lot of uh, chemical you know, repellents. How do, how do we you know, control the use of them? There is a chemical called the DET. Um, we ha really have to have a look at the composition of the chemical. That is by far the safest insect repellent that you can use on your skin. Um, and there are certain precautions that, that would be mentioned on the um, in the paper of that insect repellent, which would say that you have to cover your nose and eyes when you do the um, spray, and um, you have to follow those instructions. Um, the DET is the by far the safest insect repellent that you can use, and you can use them. Um, what sort of uh, vaccines, precautionary vaccines, we should be giving our kids? Um, the Influenza vaccine could be given from six months of age. So we would recommend for all children from six months of age to have the influenza vaccine. For the dengue, the virus, the um, vaccine is not available in India. Um, although there is a vaccine uh, called Dengvaxia, which is being, um, uh, which is being uh, given in Africa and um, places where there is more of a dengue epidemic, but it's not available in India, but there are a um, lot of problems that it has to be given only for the people who've already had the dengue fever. So for dengue, there is still not a vaccine available in India. 
Um, for pneumonia, yes, there is a vaccine. We would advise for all patients who are over 60 years of age and um, for all the patients who've got chronic health diseases, pneumonia vaccine is available. Um, so if you see our physicians here, they do prescribe um, the flu vaccine and the pneumonia vaccine as a routine when they come for preventive health checks, we do recommend them as a routine. Um, these, are, these are the vaccines that are available, so we could take them. Um, uh, fever is a very generic and a common term, but most of us don't know when we should be worried and when we should consider a doctor or there is, it, it is still, you know, a, a mystery on what to do for a fever. Can you guide us more on it? Yeah. So the fever um, is, as I said, it's a wide spectrum. It could present um, with the cold, with the common cold that we call it as, with your runny nose, with your cold, cough, throat pain, muscle ache and everything. These are the simple symptoms that we think about. And this, this presence is a simple influenza and you can treat that with your um, staying at home, taking some adequate fluids and uh, taking adequate rest and paracetamol. The other um, spectrum is when somebody is very disoriented, feeling very confused, they are having chest pain, they are having breathlessness. In children, if they are having fits, if they are vomiting persistently, all these things should be um, taken as serious signs of fever and uh, they should be taken to hospital as soon as possible. In dengue, if you look at it, they might have small spots on their skin and uh, they might be having uh, passing blood in their urine or when they're brushing the teeth, they might be um, having blood in their um, mucous membranes. And those are the serious signs that you need to get to the hospital immediately. So it is very important um, not to seek, not, not to make sure that you delay seeking help when you get a fever, when to identify when the serious signs are there and especially in children and older age group, they do tend to um, deteriorate quite quickly. So we should get immediate help for them. Um, as you said, the fever is a very, very common symptom, but what comes along with it, it's a very important thing. Um, there are conditions where you go into the respiratory failure or the multi-organ failure um, after a week of fever so the earlier symptoms or the things that you might have is what I've said before, like your chest pain, your breathlessness, your coughing up blood, or you know, you're, you're just having some bleeding while brushing your teeth and things. You have to go to hospital immediately. There are a lot of conditions where um, there are a lot of patients that we see who come after a week of fever and then we identify this patient is quite dehydrated. This patient has gone into septic shock. This patient has got um, the dengue hemorrhagic fever and they're bleeding quite a lot. And um, basically they just, they just have a lot of fluid coming out from their uh, cells and getting collected around the organs. And those are all the terminal stages. So the, you have to, if, the, if you think that the fever is not getting treated, if, the, if you think the fever is still high after four days, five days, or if you're having any of these symptoms, as I told you, you need to get to the doctor immediately. Apart from malaria, fevers, and all the respiratory diseases, what are the other diseases we can expect in, or anticipate in a rainy season or a winter season? Um, hmm. As I told you, the malaria is very common. The dengue is common. The um, influenza is common. Pneumonia is common. Bronchitis is common. Acute bronchitis, which is inflammation of your upper airways, that is very common. And exacerbation of your asthma, and your bronchitis, which is again inflammation of your lungs, is very common. Um, these are the conditions that would be um, very common during the monsoon season. Um, most of it because of the spread of the viruses and um, because of your uh, uh, immunity and uh, also because of your um, closed air spaces that we have during the cold weather. These are the conditions that you can have. How do we ident identify a malaria, basically, from other fevers? Um, see, the, unfortunately, most of these infections that we've been talking about present almost a similar way. Um, so the thing with malaria is it's, it's cyclical. Like uh, in dengue, uh, you might have the fever, headache, 
um, and joint pains and everything continuously. Malaria, they might have fever, but there might be certain sharp spikes where you have a very high fever once in two days or once in three days. And again, it presents with um, a sort of vomiting, abdominal pain, um, and the fever which comes and which, which is there uh, on and off. So these are the uh, signs that you need to look out for malaria. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, what is the take home message you're going to give today to our viewers? Um, the take home message was, would be um, cover yourselves during the night, especially cover yourselves with long shirts and trousers. Um, make sure that there is no stagnant water around your houses. And if you are going out in the cold weather, please wrap yourselves warm and take your flu vaccines and your pneumonia vaccines and eat a lot of healthy, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. There's a tendency to go and eat all these sort of fried items during the monsoon season, um, which is probably not going to improve your immunity. Please eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Keep yourself safe. Thank you, ma'am. That is Dr. Sarana Dawparni, our consultant family physician at Apollo Heart Center. For inquiries and appointments, please call 733-87-77888. I repeat, 733-87-77888. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you.